Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and today we are going to start a new playlist that is SSIS interview questions and answers. I am working on SSIS since January 2010 and since the SQL Server 2005 version and since then I am working as a pure SSIS developer. I have taken hundreds of interviews in my previous company and several machine tests for the persons who wanted to join as an SSIS developer and even myself has given a lot of interviews for SSIS. So, this playlist I am going to prepare using my experiences with all the questions those I asked in the interviews and then with all the questions that I came across during when I gave the interview and some questions those are normally asked in different companies. So I searched a lot on, over internet and then with all my experience and then real time scenarios I am going to prepare the SSI interview questions playlist. So, I'm going to add a lot of more videos here. So if you watch all the videos here in the SSIS interview questions and answers playlist, then I bet that as an SSIS developer, you can clear any kind of interview questions because I'm going to include all kind of questions here. I was getting a lot of requests to, to make the videos on the SSIS interview questions and answers. So that's uh, I think after a very long time, I'm just going to start on this one. So this is my profile. I have 13 plus years of experience on Microsoft technologies including SSIS, SQL Server and C Sharp. So what is SSIS? SSIS stands for SQL Server Integration Services. It is a feature of SQL Server and when you install the SQL Server then there is an option to install the SSIS as well. So SSIS is an ETL tool where ETL stands for Extract, Transform and Load. SSIS is mainly used for data migration projects and to load the data into data warehouse. SSIS is available since SQL Server 2005 version and the current version in the market of SSIS is SQL Server 2019 version. Prior to SSIS 2005, we had the DTS in SQL Server 2000 version. So right now in the market other than SSIS, we have some other ETL tools as well and one of the popular tool is Informatica. So the very popular question that is normally asked is what is the difference between data flow and control flow. Data flow actually defines the flow of data from source to destination. So in data flow we have three types of components that is first we have sources from where we can read the data and then we have transformations. So optionally we have the option to transform the data before inserting the data into the destination. And then finally we have the destination where we can insert our data into. We have a separate engine for data flow which makes the data flow very efficient. On the other hand control flow is the area where we can put different tasks together including data flow tasks and then we can connect different tasks together using the precedence constants. So the control flow is actually defining the workflow how the SSIS package is going to be executed, which task is going to be executed first and which task is going to execute it last. So control flow is the main area where the all tasks are situated. What is precedence constraints in SSIS? So the precedence constraints are the green, red or gray connectors. Those connects the tasks together. So if there is a green connector, so it means that the second task will be executed only after the successful execution of the first task and similarly if there is a red connector between two tasks it means that the second task will only be executed if the previous task fails. Similarly if there is a gray connector used between two tasks in SSIS it means that second task will be executed irrespective whether the first task succeeded or failed. We can also use expressions in the precedence constraints. So after the execution of previous task or first task, the expression will be evaluated. You can use SSIS variables in the expressions and based on the result of the expression, next task will be executed. If you want to learn more about the precedence constraints in detail, then I will share the link to the video in the description of this particular video. How SSIS runtime engine is different from the data flow pipeline. SSIS runtime engine is responsible for managing the SSIS workflow during the runtime like how different tasks in the control flow will be executed and in which order. It is responsible for all different events like on error event, on pre-execute event. So if you have configured the checkpoints or transactions in an SSIS package 
then SSI's runtime engine will take care all of that including all kind of logging and executing the task in parallel if configured. On the other hand, SSI's data flow pipeline engine is responsible for executing the data flow in the SSI's package. So at runtime, SSI's data flow engine creates an execution plan and then data flow engine executes the execution plan. So data flow engine pulls the data from source, store it in memory, executes the required transformation and then finally loads the data into the destination. So the next question is how to create the deployment utility. In previous versions of SSIS like in SSIS 2008R2 to create the deployment utility in the solution explorer we had to right click on the solution explorer on the project name and then select the properties and when you click on the properties so on the property page under configuration properties we need to click on the deployment so here we need to set the create deployment utility to true as you can see in the in this particular image so this was for the older versions of the SSIS however in the latest version of SSIS like in Visual Studio 2019 or maybe 2017 when you execute the SSIS package so it automatically creates the deployment utility and the extension of the deployment utility will be the project name dot ispec file like as you see in this particular image the ispec file is stored in the in your SSIS package then bin folder and then deployment folder so if you don't find the deployment utility then rebuild your SSIS project right click on the project and then rebuild it so it will create the deployment utility for it so this particular deployment utility you can just copy to another server and then you can just deploy the SSIS package to another server so that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel to see more videos and SSIS and SQL Server. Thank you so much.